hello students after a long time we are uh, meeting uh, actually uh, i take a lot of sessions in the beginning about industrial microbiology where we discuss about the various uh, sections in the industry like the uh, one which is like raw material quality control then uh, production i mean to say the upstreaming uh, pro then the production and the downstreaming process what are the important sections in the industry okay but of course we are not dealt in detail about these okay for, uh, for in today's class we will just learn about the bioreactors okay bioreactors uh, what are bioreactors it's a aseptic vessel in which you can produce the desirable product for example in the lab you will produce it take acid from aspergillus niger but in the industry it's a mass cultivation right a sterile container huge container you can hold gallons of media which used for the production okay and of course it's having its own recovery process uh, called as product recovery today we will learn about this we all know that even plant uh, and animal uh, bioreactors are there cell bioreactors are there this is you cultivate animal cells and plant cells in the bioreactors they are called aseptic vessels but we need to have a confusion in this aspect fermenter is something which is used in the fermentation industry of course the same name in the plant cell bioreactor we cultivate the cells though it's not a fermentation process okay even our products many of them are like that where we cultivate the organism but it's not a fermentation process for example xanthan gum is not a fermented product but xanthan gum is a production by the microbe under aseptic conditions we need to grow them correct okay? so i think you got the difference bioreactor is an aseptic vessel fermenter also is an aseptic vessel fermenter the term came very much beginning just to understand about the fermentation industry related aspect bioreactor a new term came where it tells about a sterile vessel in which you can cultivate microbial cells or plant cells or animal cells for the sake of some importance without any contamination okay so you will be learning construction principles and significance in the uh, few slides which we have okay i'll be going on with the slides now uh, in so students you are, you are seeing a typical bioreactor here isn't it okay a bioreactor is an aseptic vessel as i was telling you here you can see that uh, there is a, a center there's an agitator with impeller blades it's run with the motor okay what is the material actually a bioreactor uh, is made of okay but today modern uh, bioreactors we have the um, alloys also being used right but um, in the older ones uh, like fermentation industry when you take even the cypress wood and all has been used for the uh, for the uh, manufacturing but uh, re please remember bioreactor is something which is very very important for an industry it's heart of an industry okay wherein it has to Uh, take care of it very nicely even a uh, 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 fermentation industry like wine production if you talk about ub okay uh, uh, investment was for only one or two bioreactors probably and eventually you can see that an industry would grow with number of bioreactors being increasing in the industry okay but uh, anyway so uh, today we have a lot of materials also being used like you know they use glass ones sometimes they also use the borosilicate glass neoprene and all uh, materials are used for construction iron iron uh, stainless steel also is there okay uh, what uh, but whatever material they are using copper also sometimes for, for the beer production they use copper type of uh, fabrication what is fabrication fabrication is something which is a lining inside the bioreactor for penicillin we go for the stainless steel so there are certain things like you know they keep in mind for a construction that is called a bioreactor construction there can be a question uh, related to this what is a how do you construct a bioreactor okay just implement certain uh, things that are important and uh, you can keep explaining it in points uh, first of all you tell about the body material of the bioreactor tell about uh, uh, the holding of media how much it can hold uh, usually 25 to 100 gallons of uh, uh, a bioreactor can be there sometimes 2000 gallons sometimes 5000 gallons or 10000 gallons we have something called horton spheres make, make a note of it horton h o r t o n horton spheres s p h e r e s horton spheres this can hold 2 lakh 50000 to 5 lakh gallons of uh, media okay so usually width of the if i talk about the bioreactor sizes and all uh, the height i'm telling about the height of the bioreactor will be around 3 uh, uh, Three, I mean, I want to tell you the ratio here. Actually, height and uh, width. Okay, if width is a uh, two, the height should be three. That's how a bioreactor is constructed uh, in a fermentation industry. I'll repeat once again: height is to width is equal to two is to three. Uh, I mean to say, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sorry here. 
the width means the base okay the width will be 2 height will be 3 that's how the construction is done and when you talk about animal cell bioreactors and uh, there the ratio is same 1 is to 1 I'll repeat once again for you to clarify here this concept just observe the picture here so this is uh, 2 this is 2 and this is 3 the ratio how many of our uh, like you know it can be in meters hmm? okay uh, yeah uh, to tell you uh, about the uh, construction part we also have to understand that mo there's a motor in the top motor is fixed uh, it having it's having its own uh, designing here when you talk about this part okay this is uh, usually when you talk about that portion it is uh, the stuffing box okay in the old bioreactors and all like construction wise if you take in this region they used to use the cotton yarn or rubber rings and all okay that's called stuff box stuffing box why do you think it is reeded because this impeller shaft has to support the motor no so that is why there's a piercing uh, uh, it will be pierced through this uh, upper roof uh, called the headspace region okay it's going to be entering there so this region will be the stuffing box i think you can make out the stuffing box the yellow one and then down you have the uh, blades being fixed okay this will rotate in a particular speed i will discuss about agitation and all in future classes and this is the baffles okay baffles help in uh, turbulence movement let us say uh, when an agitator impeller blade is moving in clockwise direction baffles come in the way and move the media in the anti-clockwise direction so that there's a proper agitation so whenever i'm talking about a bioreactor we should know that there is agitation and aeration two important things one should always identify or keep it in mind okay so um, what do you see here other than so how big the bioreactor will be if you consider it can be up to two floors okay in many industries when you go for uh, visits you would have seen this is the lower part of the building so here the bioreactor harvesting will happen this will be in the next floor this will be in subsequent floor and finally the topmost floor where only you can see the only headspace okay yeah so what all uh, things are there bioreactors can be small also i'm just giving there are some in the, uh, industries having big big bioreactors up to two floors also okay what are the important parts of this other than the body part what we've discussed now so here you can find that there is a, a compressed air seal and then outlet for air steam first you have, can see inlet of air steam and outlet for air steam which are having filters in each okay and of course here you have inoculation port what is inoculation port inoculation port is a place where you're going to add the inoculum let's say it's for wine production you're going to add yeast okay here is the acid or base addition okay and this is anti foaming agent this is the uh, where you can add the uh, anti foaming agent because foam will raise in the fermenter when when for continuous agitation occurs that foam anti foam should be added like lard oil for example should be added or silicones is added to uh, minimize the foam otherwise what happens is the foam will raise up and leads to contamination usually the only three fourth of the uh, bioreactor is filled with the medium okay uh, one fourth you can see even one fourth you can see the blades here why because when they are agitating this is the head space a lot of foam will be formed okay and of course uh, this is a sensor sensor is only one they have shown like this but there are many sensing probes each one is a separate probe for ph for temperature and oxygen concentration for everything there's a separate probe okay and outer jackets are visible here cooling jackets okay the cooling jackets are there for cooling the fermenter because it's a just a cross section completely will cover the wire reactor otherwise this jacket okay this jacket is going to cool the uh, fermenter when it then temperature goes high because in the fermentation medium temperature is raised and then cooling jackets will cool the fermenter this is a, a common methodology is being used earlier fermenters they had inner cooling coils which runs in the wall but it uh, walls of the fermenter throughout okay but there will be a lot of cleaning uh, difficulties and contaminations etc so uh, this is a better option nowadays the designing i'll be teaching you about the various types of bioreactors right nowadays there's a lot of innovations in the bioreactor uh, construction there's you don't even find such a mechanism the aeration is such a way that uh, there won't be heat generated much the directors are uh, having uh, large area space 
and uh, it cools by itself there are many bioreactors like that we'll be learning about them this is a basic construction what you're seeing i think you got the idea of uh, what and of course here is a harvest line the harvest line is for uh, collecting the cells and well as the media um, uh, uh, the uh, metabolites produced by the organism for example yeast will produce alcohol into the medium right yes whereas uh, uh, if you want some product uh, from the cell inside the cell we need to harvest it from the cell there are like penicillin also is released into the medium but maximum extraction can happen in the mycelium also like that we have uh, many products which are there internal restriction enzymes of a bacteria right okay anyway so these are some of the uh, basics what we have to learn we'll be learning agitators and all separately just this is a uh, outer construction what i'm uh, trying to explain to you so to introduce again bioreactor is something a vessel which has a provision for cell cultivation under sterile conditions it needs uh, i think i've explained all this it can be used for cultivation of microbial cells plant cells and all cylindrical ranging in size okay material uh, stainless steel or alloys specification of a bioreactor when you talk about agitator baffles spargers what are spargers i already explained what's agitator and a baffle we'll be discussing separately also this is only basic class spargers are the um, uh, ones which will go help in providing aeration to the uh, medium okay you want to look into the spargers you can see this i think uh, here is a sparger can you see this this is a air sparger in which air is passed for aeration process to occur cooling jackets these are some of the specifications of a bioreactor any bioreactor will have its own operations you know like you know uh, upstreaming downstreaming i'll be discussing separately about this just terminology i want to just uh, highlight to you upstreaming is a process where uh, you add the inoculum process that in the lab in the beginning with the, and you do a lot of quality control checks okay then you are going to put it into the bioreactor and finally you are going to harvest the product that is downstreaming process there can be small questions on that what is upstreaming what is downstreaming okay have my own other pictures i'll be highlighting them in future okay types of agitators what is an agitator something which is used for mixing okay it can be used in various operations in pharma industry in in uh, various operations and also in a uh, uh, design the microbiology and biotechnology fields all the mixing wherever it happens like you know agitation mixing of the cells what's importance of agitation it is uniformly mixing the cells okay the cells and the nutrients uh, otherwise you're providing large amount of media cells may settle down so there should be mixing homogenization so agitators help in homogenizing the medium the nutrients are maximum used by the cells and thus uh, the industry is benefited there are different types of agitators like one or two to name them here you find a few paddle agitators anchor agitators radial propeller propeller agitators turbine helical okay like that so so you, you can see a paddle agitator paddle agitator is one which is most primary types of agitators with blades that can reach up to the tank walls almost it is a quite uh, a wider one doesn't touch the baffle there's also a baffle which is going to give the counter current uh, the anti clockwise uh, rotation most common is paddle agitators very common in uh, fermentation industry anchor agitators are uh, helping in uh, a parallel flow very closer flow of the medium very uh, uh, a simple agitator it is it is fixed to the uh, shaft at an angle so that it can be helping in uh, movement of the liquid medium radial propellers and uh, propeller agitators when you see both of them are having small small disc like uh, blades okay there can be two to four blades which has fixed what is the use of an radial propeller is it helps in uh, rotating or movement of the uh, medium very close to the shaft uh, like you know they'll be fixed parallel flow will be there to the uh, with the shaft of the shaft propeller blades is uh, something which is shaped with, um, tapering towards the shaft to minimize centrifugal force and produce maximum axial flow i'll be discussing about axial flow and uh, radial flow shortly after some time turbine agitators are something which is um, uh, having a disc like nature to which a lot of blades are fixed okay 
uh, it helps in turbulent uh, movements of the fluid. Please remember it helps in turbulent movements. The next picture is in the next slide here. So here you can see this. See, you can see that there is a uh, different types of uh, uh, turbines. Okay, one is called like something which is fixed. Uh, what you see the above pictures all are uh, these all what you are seeing is the top view. Okay, this is a cross section view. Okay, what do you observe in the uh, disc turbine? And what do you difference? Can you differentiate the hub turbine? Hub turbine is um, having straight blades and that is this like uh, the, the disc turbine has a perpendicular uh, nature of the blades fixed to the disc okay and the other one is the um, curved blades and the other one is the shrouded turbine impella similar very to, very similar to this is the waldorf and vogelbusch type i'm not uh, got those pictures here i will uh, share them with you I'll uh, give them. Uh, I'll give you the information about it. Vogelbusch, V O G E L, Vogelbusch, and Waldorf, W A L D O F F, Waldorf, are two types of uh, uh, what do you say uh, fixtures to the shaft that it gives aeration as well as helps in agitation. Okay, tremendous aeration is uh, seen in them because very closely the ridges are arranged, just like what you are seeing here in the curved nature like this. Helical agitators are there, which are uh, twisted blades, uh, just like threads. Okay, it's used in vigorous movement of the fluid. It is very useful for xanthan gum production and all because the in xanth the name itself says you know xanthan gum means the product will be very viscous. What is produced by the xanthomonas? Okay, that time you need a proper agitator or something like this. Please remember, whenever using agitators, there should not be any shearing of cells. What is shearing of cells? Damage to cells, S H E A R I N G, shearing of cells should not happen. Otherwise, you are, uh, what's the use of putting the inoculum there? Okay, here is a simple description uh, what you are seeing paddle type, turbine type, screw type, and all. I will only tell you about the disadvantages. I have already told you about the advantages there. Okay, disadvantages is the paddle type, uh, power consumption is very high, and inefficient mixing will be there. Turbine type is not preferable for solvents with high viscosity. Whereas screw type is not preferred for immiscible solvents. Only when it's an immiscible solvent, it is much useful. How do you select the agitator? Not necessary any direct, direct relation between power consumption and amount. Mainly depends on the viscosity of the medium. So whenever you're using a, selecting an agitator, you should see for viscosity of the medium. Your product will be having viscosity or not. Based on that, you should decide. And the mixing time is, and also you should remember shearing of cells. You can't use a sharp blade for a animal cell bioreactor because the cells might get damaged very faster than other cells. Okay, so we should be careful about selecting an agitator and fixing the agitator also matters a lot. Only experience, the, like you know, in the field will be able to give you a lot of suggestions on them because by experience you'll see whether the cell shearing is more or less. So what type of agitator blade should be used? A lot of research work will be done in this field. Hence, you, have, you need a designer, an engineer uh, also in the industry. A mixing reagent is a, in a feed tank or a blending product from different batches in a storage tank. A relatively small mixer is used, even if several minutes are required for complete mixing. This point, what I'm trying to say, the fourth point, what you're seeing here, is very much uh, applicable uh, in the industries. But why, you know, earlier days, uh, please note, make a note of it, earlier the industries used to uh, take a diluted medium and into the fermenter itself and go for batch sterilization. I'll repeat once again. Batch sterilization means already bioreactor will be loaded with the diluted crude media, whatever you need to make. And then, then uh, that media is sterilized. That whole fermenter is taken as a cooker, converted to a cooker, sterilizer, I mean to say. Okay, what's going to happen to the material? Material gets worn out very soon because of high temperature exposure. Nowadays, what they have done, innovations, separately a cooker, smaller cooker will be there. Highly concentrated uh, media is prepared and then it is sterilized in the sense uh, everything is done in a smaller cooker one and then it is going to be brought to the bioreactor. A smaller cooker version, what I am trying to say is the agitator, what is the fourth point here. Mixing the components, blending the components in a storage tank, which is of small size and then bringing it to the 
bioreactor so that the bioreactor is not affected much with high temperature you can add in a separate uh, uh, means once you make it uh, sterilize in a storage tank like this and then push it into the bioreactor and afterwards you can add uh, again sterile water uh, which will be diluting this all that is done by uh, media formulation i'll be talking about media formulation also in future which is a topic for you in the syllabus not only for syllabus you have to learn about it this is the point what i told you storage tank what is this a continuous still tank reactor okay why should i uh, put that here is to just to understand that there's a baffle there's a um, motor okay and then there's impeller blades with the agitator shaft okay why did i put this here is to differentiate what is meant by axial flow axial flow means the medium is moving in a direction like this see it comes like this it goes up along the wall and again drops down so media goes like this and again drops down so there's a uniform mixing there are not too many uh, uh, joints of uh, impeller blades but if one or two okay only one line here it goes like this and comes back this is called axial flow again if you talk about this uh, yeah you can see that there's a movement in this pattern okay there can be axial flows even like this that uh, if you have two three blades that becomes a radial flow okay uh, if you just i'll just show you i have some picture about it with me just few minutes okay so please remember there are two types of movements so here you can see this picture this picture is about axial flow you can see that there is a movement of the liquid down the wire reactor goes up along the sides of the wall again comes down that is called as a axial flow i'll share these pictures with you later on i think another example for understanding axial flow is the air lift reactor please can you note that there's no agitator blades in this it's missing no impeller shaft only aeration itself brings agitation today that is the importance of air lift bio reactor no problems of shearing of cells there's a adequate mixing homogenization by a forceful air flow so you make you're getting a air flow supply of oxygen is there and agitation is also occurring here in this type of bio reactor there's no need of this uh, even a, a cooling uh, process because cooling happens because of the um, larger uh, what do you say cylindrical uh, huge uh, uh, bio reactors okay uh, there is no heat much generated so here my topic here today what to talk to you about is the flow again you can see very clearly in 